Today, we're talking about how you access a single bit of information within a variable inside your programs. Welcome back everybody. Today's video is on accessing single bits. This is something that I see students run into all the time. They've got a single bit they need to access and they're not really sure how to get just that one bit. And this can be a little confusing for new programmers because you know they know how to declare variables like this. They know how to give it a value. And many new programmers also understand that this is at some level stored in binary, a sequence of ones and zeros inside the computer's memory. Often of course, we can ignore that fact, but sometimes we need to access a single bit, a single single one or zero, we need to know whether it's a one or a zero, and sometimes that throws people. So that's what we're gonna look at today. So let's get into the code. Okay, so today we're starting off with a really simple program, not much to it. We have one variable right here, this X, which we set to be 42, and then we're going to print out that variable down here, right? So nothing too complicated, let's just make sure it compiles. And if we run it, you can see, yeah, we get 42. So nothing too crazy or exciting. It'll get more exciting as we go, of course. And I've put out here just what the binary is for 42, just in case that's helpful. But before we get too far into it, we might wanna talk really quick about why you might wanna access just one of these bits. Now, the most common reason I run into is when I'm using bit fields, also known as bit vectors sometimes. I've talked about those in a previous video. I'll link down in the description if you missed it. But this is when you have a variable where each bit has has its own meaning. So each one or zero means something independent of the others. One example where you see this is sometimes in file systems. For example, in the FAT file system, which I use for educational reasons, even though it's not the most popular one out there, it is really simple and so it's really nice for educational purposes. But in the FAT file system, every directory entry, so every file or subdirectory has a status byte. That's eight bits and each of those bits means something. So bit zero, for example, tells you that this thing is read only. Bit one means that it's hidden. Bit two tells you that it's a volume label. Bit three tells you it's a subdirectory. Bit four tells you it's an archive. So each of these bits means something different. This is a very compact way of storing status information. What this allows us to do is, let's say that this byte is equal to 19. So that's 00010011 in binary or 13 in hex as we usually write it because we don't usually write out the binary for things, we usually write it in hex because that's just more compact. But if we saw this in the file system, that would mean that we have a read-only hidden subdirectory. And so if I'm writing some code that has to deal with this bit field, this bit vector, maybe I have some code that I only want to run if the file, if I run into a hidden file, something that's hidden, right? In that case, I need to test bit one to see what its value is. Or maybe I have code that just needs to run four subdirectories. So in that case, I would need to test bit three. And there are a few different ways we can do this. So let's take a look. So maybe the most general way, let's start down here and let's just say that I have a particular bit that I wanna print out. You know, the first thing I can do is, well, let's just, here, let's just uh, copy this. And let's say that I want to get, say bit three, of x. So if we want to do this, pretty much the, the fairly standard way to do this might be to say, let's first shift it into the position we want. So the bit we want is bit three in this case. And remember, we're starting at from zero. We're counting from zero. So some people might say this is the fourth bit, but we're going to call it bit three. So yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to right shift off all of the lower bits. So all the bits that we don't want that are lower or to the right from bit three. And then once we're done with that, we will simply and this with one. Okay, so that's going to put the bit we want into the zeroth position, and then we're gonna zero out everything but that bit, leaving us just the one or zero that we care about. And just to make sure this is working, let's come through here and let's test this with bit four as well. So we could do the same thing here with bit four. So it's fairly general. And if we compile it and we run it, well, sure enough, you can see bit three is one, bit four is zero. So this will work. It is a little bit ugly. You know, you definitely don't wanna have, make a habit of having too much of this floating around in your code. So often one thing that we may do, if we're gonna be doing a lot of bit testing is I may come up here and make some kind of function or macro that does this. So let's do a macro today. So we'll say pound define, let's call it uh, bit value. I've seen a bunch of different names for this. Sometimes people just use BV, but let's say that we have something, some variable, and we want to get the nth bit of it. Then we can just pound define that to be 
So same thing, we're gonna take X and we're gonna right shift it N and then we will and it with zero X one. Now also just in case X and N are not simple variables, we're going to add an extra set of parentheses here so that we can handle more complicated expressions. But yeah, now we should be able to come down here, refactor a little bit and say, I want bit value X three and we can do the same thing down here. And oops, I, uh, yeah, sorry, confused my variable name. Okay, so now we basically have something that does the same thing as before, but this is a little bit more readable. Okay, so that works and it's fairly general. You just give it a number and the bit that you wanna access and it will get it for you. And just to generalize this a little further, let's, let's just print out the whole number using this macro. We can say something like this, like let's make a variable called num bits and set it equal to size of whatever it is we're trying to get. So in this case, X this is gonna be the number of bytes in X and there's eight bits per byte. So size of X times eight is going to give us the number of bits we want. And then let's just say for int I equals zero and let's go up to num bits. So the number of bits we have I plus plus. And then for each of these, we're going to come in here and let's just print out the bit. Okay, so instead of all of this stuff, let's just print out the bit and we'll change this to I. And then down here, we'll just put in new line so that we get a new line after this. And we could put this in a separate function if we wanted, which would basically give us the ability to print out a number in binary. Uh, but for right now, we'll just leave it here. Okay, now one thing you will notice here is that this is going to put our binary number in the opposite order than we're used to. We're used to writing the high order bits first followed by the low order bits at the very end. So if we wanna do that, uh, just to make it a little more natural in how we're used to reading it, maybe we could do something like this. So we're basically gonna count out the same number of bits, but we're going to count back from the end. So we'll do them in reverse order. So that should work pretty straightforward. And so now you can see we do end up with the binary value of 42 is showing up right here. So this gives me the output that I expect because we're dealing with a 32 bit value, you know, so we got a whole bunch of zeros here at the end that I didn't put here in my comment, but the value is the same. Okay, so that works. Now there is one other way that people check bits that I wanna show you. It's super common and it's a little bit faster. So as you see, if I just have a variable here, if I just have a value here and I just need to test one of these bits, as we often do in a bit field, I don't actually have to do the shift, right? So this, this right shift up here turns out to be unnecessary. And how this usually looks in programs is, let's go back to the example that I used with the FAT file system is I might, for example, say, let's just make a couple different macros. Let's pound define, you know, read only and make this 0x1. Let's make a few of these. I'm gonna make the next one hidden and this one will be two. This one will be volume label and this one will be four. And then this last one, let's make subdirectory. It'll be eight, actually, sorry. I forgot there's one more. That one is going to be archive. And this one will be one zero. Okay, so uh, formatting. Okay, fine, whatever. I would normally really like these to line up. My auto formatter is not cooperating. I'll have to go back and check that. But the point of each of these pound of fines here is that what I've done is I've made them. So in binary, this is zero, 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 one. Or if we add the zeros at the end, so this is gonna look like this, where this one is going to look like this over here. So you can see what's happening here is each of these basically just has a one in the bit position that I care about for these particular status flags. So the read only bit happens to be the first one, then we end up with the hidden one, then we end up with the volume label, and it's gonna go like this throughout, right? So we can come over here to, yeah, just for completeness, there you go. Okay, so we have basically these bit masks set up that have a one in just the location that we want them. And then we could come down here in our code, for example, and say, if we wanted to test these, we could say if x and, it's important to use the bitwise and here, we could use read only, then we could print out read only. And we could do the same with any of these others. Like let's just do hidden 
And so based on our number here, if we do this, we would expect uh, to not see the read only one, but to see the hidden one. Because what this is gonna do is if the bit in the bit position that we care about is a one, then that one anded with our mask is going to give us a non-zero value. It's gonna give us a one. It's gonna give us the mask again. But if that bit is a zero, then all the bits are gonna be zero when you and them all together. And so we're going to end up with zero. Okay, so non-zero is true, zero is false. And if we come down here, let's just test this, make sure it works. We compile it and run it. You can see, sure enough, we are hidden, where if we came up here and I changed this value to a three, for example, now we are read only and hidden, right? So we're testing that because that changing this to 43 makes this a one. Okay, I'll put this back to where it was. Okay, now a reminder again. Now one common mistake I want to emphasize here is it's really common for people to be like, oh, I'm just gonna test for equivalence here. Equivalence is not your friend because it's only going to work some of the time, right? It's If I have something that is only read only, equivalence is gonna work just fine, but what if I have something that is hidden, read only, and a subdirectory? It's gonna have many bits set and it's not going to be equal to this mask, so it won't work. But the bitwise and will always work. And so that's how you get the value of one bit in a variable in your programs. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. If you're enjoying this content, if you're enjoying these videos, I do hope you'll find a way to support the channel either on Patreon through buying merch through telling a friend, click something. It makes a huge difference and helps me do what I'm doing on this channel. And with that said, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week.